I've got a few fill in the blanks here. Let's talk about them next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT and 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Tuesday, December 21st. I am Frank Stample, not joined by Scott White, who is on vacation. I'm joined by Michael Govier. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at MJGovier. That's G-O-V-I-E-R. Fill in the blank number one. If Tyler O'Neill's ceiling is 40 homers and 20 steals, his floor is blank. His floor is 22 home runs and 25 steals. He's a high BABIP guy. Throughout his career, regardless, you expect him to probably have a batting average decline because he had a high batting average for his profile. But even if that slips and that gets worst case scenario, like 225, 230, you're still looking at a guy with a floor that's not terrible. Yeah, he just has to stay on the field. I think that's really what it comes down to. He's got to stay healthy. He is a physical freak. He hits the ball hard. He runs extremely fast this past season. Finally broke out. 286 batting average, 34 homers, 15 steals. I do think that the the floor in terms of the batting average is much lower. But as long as he's playing and he's healthy, 20-plus homers, double-digit steals, I do think that that is the floor here for Tyler O'Neill. Fill in the blank number two. There is a blank percent chance Byron Buxton plays in at least 120 games in 2022. What do you think, Mike? Well, if dire is a percentage, I would say there's a dire chance of that happening, which means it, it's really, really, really frantic and unlikely. We have just not seen it. 2017 was a one year. He had 140 games played. It was exciting. It was still a growth season for him, so we didn't see a dominant Buxton that we are seeing in spurts in 2020 and 21. So I just don't expect him, unless he makes radical changes to his body, to his mindset, everything. He's got the big seven-year, $100 million deal that he signed, laden with incentives. So that makes you think that he's going to commit more to himself, but we just don't know that for sure. So I don't know how you can say with any confidence that that's a certainty. All right. I'm going to give it a, let's say 25%. 25% chance that Buxton could stay healthy for 120-plus games. And if he does that, I think that he will pay off his price tag. He was amazing in 2021. Finally showed that superstar potential, 306 batting average, 19 homers, nine steals in only 61 games. I think he missed a month or two because it got hit on the hand with a pitch. It's not really his fault, obviously, but uh, yeah, if he could avoid those injuries and, and, and stay healthy, we could be talking about a you know, top 10, top 15 type outfielder. Just please stay healthy. Stay on the field. One, Byron Buxton. Fill in the blank. Number three, if Shane McClanahan throws 160 plus innings, he'll finish as a top blank starting pitcher in 2022. Top 15 starting pitcher. Ooh. I really believe that. That is super, super high, I know. But if you start to look at what he would do with 160 innings pitched, it would be elite stuff. So I'm expecting him to continue to grow. The Rays are great with pitching. They know what they're doing. There's also a lot of opportunity here. So if he's given 160 innings, I expect a 320 ERA or less with a K per nine of 10 or above and a pitcher that you could really trust to be borderline elite at a very young age and with so much more potential beyond that. Yeah, and he flashed some of that potential here in 2021. 343 ERA, 127 whip. The whip is a little bit high. He you know, gave up a good amount of hits. He's a little bit st- uh, too hittable at this point still. That's what he needs to work on, but 141 strikeouts and 123 in a third innings pitched. 14.8% swinging strike rate, tied for eighth among starting pitchers with at least 120 innings pitched this past season. The problem, his hard hit rate against was in the bottom sixth percentile. So, look, he has all the makings, all the upside, high 90s fastball, slider, curve, that looks amazing. He's got to continue to work on the changeup. Just don't live in the zone as much at times. Kind of reminds me of an early career Shane Bieber. Uh, and if that's any indication, now nah, I'm not saying Shane McClanahan is going to be Shane Bieber, but <laughs> Never know, never know. Fill in the blank number four, the last one that we're going to talk about here. Over the past month, Justin Verlander's ADP is 110.7, right around the 9-10 turn in a 12-team league. If Justin Verlander looks like himself in spring training, this ADP will jump blank spots. This ADP will jump 70 to 80 spots. He's proven it throughout his career. If he's healthy and we see everything we need to see, there's no reason to doubt Verlander at all. In fact, you're getting a bargain on him right now at his current ADP, which is a 105 to 110-ish. So if you're drafting early, you're getting a great opportunity to cash in on a guy, if healthy, who could be a top 10 SP. A top 10, he could be. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with this. I, you know, I think 60 to 70 spots, you know, if he looks like himself in spring, we're going to, we're going to see him shoot up to fourth, you know, anywhere from like the three to five round range. I think that really is possible for him. He re-signed with the Houston Astros. Uh, and the last time we saw him over a full season, he was the number one player in fantasy baseball in five by five Roto. Yes. He's coming back from Tommy John surgery. He'll have 17 months. He'll be 17 months removed by the time spring training begins 18 months by the time the regular season starts, I think that's more than enough time for Justin Verlander. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. We'll be back again on Thursday morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.